Item 5 on the order paper, the adjournment. The proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes, and all other speakers will have approximately six minutes. I call Mr Barry Michael Duff. Mr Michael Duff. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Gura Mayogut, Alyaskan Korya, Ta Ahasoram Gowillan Shant Shaw, on Jasebrock Shaw, Akhor Khantosi Inu. Thank the Deputy Speaker for uh, calling this debate. I tabled this debate uh, because it's a very, very important local issue in my home community, uh, in the community of Carrick Moor, in County Tyrone, in the constituency of West Tyrone. And uh, at the outset, I want to welcome the attendance of the Environment Minister, Mark H. Durkin, whose department has overall responsibility for planning. I also want to acknowledge the fact that uh, my party colleague, local councillor Barry McNally, is in attendance for this particular debate and has a strong local interest in this matter as well. And to, to go to the point, this motion is about the lack of available land in Carrickmore to meet the housing needs of the local community and anyone else who might wish to live in the Carrickmore area at this time. In truth, this is more about people than it is about land, but the two are interconnected in this debate because an impasse has developed, a kind of stalemate has developed, where a significant number of people would like to buy a house or a site, uh, i.e. land, to develop housing in Carrickmore, but who are being hampered by the lack of available land or suitable properties. Uh, a phrase that is used locally is that nothing is moving at this time in respect of housing in the Carrickmore area. And the fact of the matter is that young people are forced to take up residence elsewhere. Uh, people with a strong sense of Carrickmore identity still retaining that identity but finding themselves in the situation where they have to go elsewhere uh, to take up residence, uh, to live, basically. And I'm aware of a good number of young people who have emigrated from the Carrickmore area, and it's their desire to come home, and they're regularly checking on the availability of housing stock in Carrickmore, either to buy or to rent. Now, I would say that Carrickmore is a strong, vital community. It is designated as a local town in the Oma district, described as an important market and service centre for its rural hinterland. Carrickmore has two local schools, St Colum Kills Primary School at Craigan Road, with strong nursery and a strong Irish medium unit. In excess of 300 pupils at this time, I think the figure is around 320. Dean McGurk College, located at Terman Road. This is a co-educational school catering for pupils of all ability levels, and the current enrolment number there is 509. And bear in mind that local pupils also attend other schools in parts of Tyrone, uh, depending on the sector or Irish medium provision, etc. Both local schools have received recognition of excellence, of their excellence in recent ETA inspections. Carrickmore also has a significant health centre, primary care centre, with patient numbers of 9,000. There are a number of other main employers because these schools, uh, this health centre, are employers as well. There are a number of other main employers in the area of construction, agri supplies, and a whole range of businesses, some of which are accommodated at the Techno Tyrone uh, Business Park, Milestone Centre uh, in Carrickmore itself. The Patrician Hall, or the Patrician, is uh, an excellent community centre, but more than that, it is a very recognised theatre and venue for concerts and all kinds of, uh, of entertainment. and. Uh, community events. The voluntary sector in Carrickmore, very, very strong, across the spectrum from the friendly care group till uh, all manifestations of the GEA, 
and other sports, including boxing. Um, Special Olympians, uh, Friendly Care Group, as I've said already, and Rainbow Gateway Club. There are very many strong community groups in Carrickmoor with uh, a vision in the community at this time being developed for a multi sport centre. So I provide this uh, kind of community message because it's relevant to the vitality of the community and the lack of movement in respect of housing. When I mentioned uh, the Dean McGurk College and St. Colum Kills Primary School, I should put on the record in this assembly that there are requirements for new builds in respect of both schools, and the Department of Education has acknowledged this, and uh, subject, of course, to available funding, but there is an absolute need there. There are also short-term accommodation needs, and similarly, there is a requirement for a new build in respect of the health, uh, the health centre. In relation to the associated matter then of the lack of availability of housing at this time, there are multiple reasons for this. A combination of circumstances which have resulted in the local housing demand outstripping supply. And uh, I would refer now to the OMA area plan, 1987 to 2002. Um, of course, the OMA area plan is out of date. Uh, it's my understanding that it's still extant in terms of the settlement limits for Carrickmoor, and that is dating back 28 years, and that's where the out-of-dateness comes into the equation. It's almost impossible to access a copy of the OMA area plan, either online or, or uh, in hard copy. Um, it's like something that is uh, stored away in a museum because it's very, very difficult to access. But I do have in my possession a copy of the OMA area plan, the relevant section for Carrickmore, which is a bit of an achievement in itself to have this physical document in my left hand at this time. Then, to supersede the OMA area plan, there was this uh, concept called the West Throne Area Plan, uh, 2019. And uh, initial findings in that uh, lack detail in respect of Carrickmore, as you might expect, it, it lacks detail. But this is then now uh, being superseded, to be superseded by the local development plan for Carrickmore. And this has been taken forward by Fermanagh and Oma District Council following the RPA. And uh, I would emphasize at this point in time that that local development plan simply needs to respond to the specific circumstances of various settlements. And today, I'm placing the focus uh, on Carrickmore. In relation to zoned land in the Oma area plan, and uh, I stand to be corrected on this by the minister, but it's my understanding that zoned land for housing development in the Carrickmore area, in Carrickmore, amounts to 10.3 hectares and that was identified back in 1987, all of 28 years ago. A small amount of this land has seen uh, small development around 20 years ago, but the majority is underdeveloped. And planners might rightly say to me, well, why are there not any developments taking place on the land that we have zoned for housing? Well, there's a number of answers to that question. One of them is that some of this land is unreachable and is under the control of banks. That's one of the reasons. Another reason, and local knowledge would tell you this, is that it's simply not going to be developed for housing. It's simply not going to be developed for housing. What is needed, I believe, is a number of sites, new sites, in convenient locations, perhaps on the periphery, of the existing settlement to support the provision of a range of house types for different housing needs in Carrickmore at this time. And obviously, there's crucial work to be done in respect of the local development plan to bring this about, working in partnership with the local community. Now, I have taken a number of initiatives at local level. Uh, one of them was to consult locally on this housing shortage, uh, 
in late May uh, and to identify the level of need in the community. I have met with the Rural Housing Association similarly and uh, we have talked about making the call for a proper thorough housing need survey to be carried out by the housing executive. And I emphasise thorough and I know that the business of the housing executive is to identify need not just for social housing but for all types of housing. But in respect of housing, uh, social housing, the housing executive has advised the Department of Social Development that in the Oma district area, in the Oma district area, there is no requirement prov for provision of new social housing. So, to me, uh, that isn't that isn't uh, so. That's not reliable based on local knowledge. And I'm not talking about solely social housing. I'm talking about private housing. I'm talking about. Uh, a cooperative co-ownership uh, co type housing. A range of housing options needs to be developed for the community and to meet community demand. The, the Rural Housing Association, to their credit, have told me that they are open for business. I've tried to engage other housing associations, notably Fold, and I haven't had any response whatsoever. Uh, I've tried on a number of occasions, uh, by telephone and by email, to secure engagement from Fold, but I haven't even had the courtesy of a reply there, so I'll, I'll continue to pursue that avenue. But I did also meet with uh, a planning officer who works with Fermanagh and Oma District Council for a preliminary conversation about this, uh, a lady called Hilda Clements, and I would thank her for providing a listening ear and for engaging with me as to the issues at this time. Of course, not making any commitments, uh, but at the same time, in a preliminary way, I wanted uh, a key planning officer in this process to at least understand the context, the problems, the particular nature of the, the difficulty that we face in Carrickmore at this time. So I'll continue to work with all relevant players to build that evidence base. I want to make a, a brief reference to planning policy in respect of uh, development in the countryside because Carrickmore is obviously a small local town with a rural hinterland. In the rural hinterland there aren't enough opportunities for people to build at this time either and uh, I know that is uh, hopefully going to be addressed as a result of the single planning policy statement and perhaps additional flexibilities that are being uh, offered to local councils to interpret that. And I thank the officials inside the Department of Environment Planning Policy Division, as well as the Minister, for uh, a good bit of engagement in recent months around that issue. But there's one issue within what might typically be called PPS 21 that I'm very concerned about, and I have two specific files with me today, which are going to go no nowhere other than back into my uh, briefcase uh, in the context of today. But to remind myself that this definition of personal circumstances, uh, I am told that if, if someone is applying for planning permission in the countryside, that uh, outside of infill opportunities, outside of farming justification, etc., one of the remote possibilities is personal and social circumstances. I have two files of local families who have particular circumstances in one case where there was a refusal, we're talking about the applicant trying to provide care for not one, not two, but three family members. And that wasn't regarded by DOE planning service as compelling. It's some sort of uh, impossible test being set for compelling circumstances. Last weekend, myself and Councillor McNally visited another family in the Carrickmore area and there planning application is in process at this time. Again, there are compelling social circumstances, health circumstances, but at this time, I fear that it won't meet the test of being described as compelling. It might be urgent, but there's some fine line between urgency and compelling uh, that only the planners understand. So I throw that in at the end of my contribution because uh, this is really about people. 
It's about Most land. Is almost up. It's about land, of course it is. But really, this is about people. And in Carrickmore, <laughs> there is a particular circumstance at this time which requires a housing strategy and goodwill from different government departments, including DOE. Call Mr. Joe Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, I rise to speak on the motion and support Mr. McAduff in bringing it forward for Carrie Moore. Uh, Carrie Moore, of course, means the big rock, Mr. Speaker, and it's a place of strong community spirit, strong individuals who have overcome many adversity in the past, and it is a viable town where we have three filling stations, three very good supermarkets, and as Mr. McAduff has said, we have the local milestone local electric company, and Michael Hart, the little Michael Hart who owned the chemist shop, Jim McGuire and John Haddon were the three men that drove that forward and created a local enterprise centre of very successful proportions. He mentioned the secondary school, and I have greatly supported that in the past. That school currently has an enrolment of 509 pupils. It's the highest enrolment ever. The ETI instructed have stated that it requires an extension or a new build. And I think the department and the CCMS are neglecting the Carrickmore community. And if this new build or extension doesn't soon happen, then people in that area will become very disillusioned. Spatial planning and housing is a fundamental issue going forward for the local development plans. And the Minister has outlined in his SPPS, published in September, the role of the new two-tier planning system. And the local council has a fundamental role now and an exciting role in trying to bring forward a local development plan cognizant of the community planning criteria. Obviously, housing is going to be crucial in that. And as Mr. McAuliffe has said, there's been many far farm families that have wanted to build houses in the rural area. And over the last 20 years, there has been a very successful uh, approval rate for houses in the countryside there. But I know he's concerned about PPS 21 in relation to the compelling personal circumstances, and that's something maybe that the department will revisit to make sure that the local authority will be able, through its planning division, to approve this type of one-off housing which is required. In relation to the urban town of Carrickmore, I have requested from the Housing Executive what is the current situation. As of March 2014, 19 applications were made for the Carrickmore area, that is Carrickmore, Lough McCrory and Mountfield, six of whom were deemed in housing stress and, and only two allocations were made. The only places outside Oma where allocations were lower than housing stress applications were carry more Garton and Drumcon. Mr Deputy Speaker, there has been a strong desire for people to own their own house in the Carrymore area. And I think this is where the zoning of land is crucial. Uh, we have a land lock situation which I think will have to be addressed by the local authority when they draw up their local development plan. Uh, I think we could go into the history of that, but that wouldn't be worthwhile here. But it's fair to say that young married couples deserve an opportunity to have either a social house or a co-ownership house or the wherewithal to be able to build their own home. And this is an area where there has always been a strong self-help approach to building houses by families supporting each other in the building if they had a site. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I support the sentiments of what Mr. McAdoff is at, and I hope that the Department and the Council, with its new role and functions, will deliver to make sure that this community continues to grow. And I would appeal to the Department of Education to recognise the circumstances, and let's support Mr. Warnock and Mr. McCann and other teachers in that school who want to have a new bug. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Call Mr. Ross Hussey. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I have to say, when I first read what the adjournment debate was about, I presumed Mr. McElduff was going to go to space. But then I read a little bit more, 
and I read that it was the Carrick Moor area, so my plans of sending you to the moon have failed. However, in all seriousness, there is no doubt that this is an important issue in Tyrone, and Tyrone generally, because we have quite a few small towns that all face a similar issue. And I'm sure there may be residents from Carrick Moor who would be surprised to find a unionist in the chamber this evening supporting your call, because clearly and it is an accepted fact that Carrick Moor would not be a unionist area. However, that is not what we are looking at. We are not looking at internal politics. We are looking at the need for housing. As the member knows, I have also attended the Patrician Centre on several occasions. I have also attended events in the Demagurk School. And I have always been made very welcome when I have attended these events. And there is no doubt anyone that travels through the town will always see activity. It is a very busy town. And there is no doubt that within County Tyrone, most people want to live near their home place. I am an Oma man and I have always wanted to live in or near Oma. Mr. McElduff is a Carrick Moor man, and over the years I have known him both as a member of Oma District Council and as a member of this chamber, he has been very proud of his association with that town, and rightly so. It should be permissible for people to live in an area they were brought up in. And reference has been made to the Oma area plan, the West Tyrone area plan, the local development plan, and plans about plans about plans. And reference has been made in relation to PPS 21. My colleague, Councillor Bert Wilson, as you know, was the champion of PPS 21 when he was chairman of the Council and fought very hard to try and get many of these rural issues resolved. Because we do have many issues within the Oma, the former Oma District Council area, where people want to live in the country and have not been able to do so. I fear that today the Minister will attempt to pass this back to councils. And he looks quite startled, but he looks to get all the time. Maybe it's the space that does it, Minister. The Council has responsibility for the planning issues, and the Council will make their decisions. But the Council will make their decisions on the plans that are given to them, perhaps by the Department. We need to see a review of the planning systems within Northern Ireland to take into account the fact that people want to remain local. People from Carrick Moor do not want to go and have to live in Oma. They do not want to go and live in Dungannon. They want to live in Carrick Moor, as people in Fintona want to live in Fintona, people in Drumquin want to live in Drumquin, and so on. So I would support the call to support as many people as possible to live within the area. Let's look at the plans. Any town in Tyrone should have something similar where land availability is looked at and where housing availability is looked at. So I support the call here this evening, and I hope that the Minister will be able to give us something positive to take back, not just to carry more, but to the other small towns in County Tyrone for special development in the future. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Call Ms Michaela Boyle. Can I thank my party colleague for bringing this adjournment debate before the House and affording me the opportunities to speak to it? The Housing Executive has confirmed that there will be no new social housing built in OMA before 2020, as the reasons outlined by my party colleague. Despite hundreds of people currently classed as homeless or in housing stress, new figures reveal that since 2010, only 62 Housing Executive properties have been built in the whole of West Tyrone. The number of new builds is the lowest of any constituency across the north, and it is in striking contrast to the Foyle area, where there have been over 1,300 social housing starts within the past five years. Currently, there are over 635 names on the OMA Housing Executive's waiting list, and that extends to Carrickmore. Of those, 93 were deemed to be homeless, while a further 183 were regarded as in housing stress. In Straban, it is even a bleaker picture. There are 695 people on the waiting list. 157 of those are classed as homeless, 
and 321 of those are in housing stress. While there is some let up on the horizon for Straban, where plans are being drawn up for 45 new builds by 2019, it is indeed a much gloomier picture for Oma and Carrickmore and the hinterlands beyond it. Recently, a housing executive spokesperson said that their study suggested the need for further social housing in Oma was zero. That is unlikely to change between 2015 and 2020, and consequently there are no plans to build any new houses in Oma district or in Carrickmore. Urgent action is needed to address this, to address the social housing crisis that exists within West Tyrone, Straban, Oma, Carrickmore and the Hinterlands. Ken Colia, you'll forgive me for expanding to other parts of West Tyrone, but as I said, I welcome the plans to build 45 social housing units within Straban, but that doesn't even put a dent on the waiting lists. And I've just this week received confirmation from Habenteg that they are to build six two bed, four two-bedroom units within Straban and two one-bedroom apartments within Straban on Bridge Street at the site of King's Corner. This house, this house has originally it is a built heritage and these are where the apartments are going. This is, as members in here would know, is a very iconic build in Bridge Street in Straban. But I do welcome the flat, fact that these, uh, this building is going to be turned into apartments and I welcome the fact that it will be restored to its former glory. Ken Colia, given the number of applicants on the social housing waiting list and those listed as statutory homeless in West Tyrone have remained at the same consistently high levels for a long number of years, the piecemeal approach by previous DSD ministers in having made provision for only 62 social housing units in the constituency over the past five years highlights the abject failure of our ministers to target resources on the basis of social need. And I do appreciate we have the Environment Minister here today to respond uh, to this. As a housing executive spokesperson did say that during 2014-15, 117 allocations were made in OMA, and as of March, there were 635 applicants on the OMA waiting list and 183 in housing stress. Single young males and females made up 56% of those deemed to be in housing stress. Despite the numbers queuing up for social housing, there will be no new builds in the current decade, and as outlined the reasons by my colleague here, um, Mr. McEldough. I would urge the Minister to do what he can to support zoning for development for social housing, and not just within Carrickmore, but as others did say, in the wider West Tyrone area. People do want to live, as they say in Straban, where they were reared. So I would urge the Minister to take action immediately. Call Mr. Declan McAleer. Uh, Gurma, good to uh, last can call you. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to commend Barry for uh, tabling this um, debate here today on spatial planning to meet uh, demand for housing in the Carrickmore area. Um, indeed, um, myself and Barry were from the same parish, opposite ends of the parish, so I'm very familiar uh, with Carrickmore. And indeed, I know the, the great pride that people have in the local area there and the, the demand to live locally. Um, there definitely is a situation there and has been there for quite a time where the demand has completely outstripped supplies, supply. And I can see it in neighbouring areas like Loch Macquarie where I'm from and Pomeroy and Berra and other uh, villages like Kilitlaha around the district where people from Carrigmore are forced to go and live in those areas because they can't get a home uh, in their own village where they're from, in their own area where they're from. And, and that's very disappointing. And, and Barry's right, they're constantly checking uh, the papers and checking housing uh, agents and whatnot to see what opportunities might arise. 
And the importance of living locally is not just the emotional attachment, which of course is very, very important. It's also about the sustainability of the community. It's also for, it's for services, for schools, it's for sporting organisations. We know how important that is in the Carrickmore area. Uh, and uh, indeed it's for, for shops and for, for other services. And reference was made earlier to the schools and uh, the, the, the primary and the secondary, the Dean McGurk in the, in the local area. And certainly, um, I'd be very familiar with certainly Dean McGurk. I'm a former pupil there and I taught there for a number of years. And indeed, the next generation, my son just started there just in September. So we're, we feel very passionate and very strong about Dean McGurk. And it's a project which we will continue to push very, very strongly on. But reference was made earlier to the, the OMA area plan. And I think it's fair to say that it is it's painfully outdated. It was crafted in 19. 87. That is the, the plan and framework which we are currently operating on, which sets out the broad land uses uh, of land in the district, and it definitely is pain, painfully out of date. And in the Omer area plan, it, it re referenced a number of uh, key issues housing, industry, and recreation, open space. And there has been development from an industrial economic point of view, there has been uh, good developments in terms of recreation open space. And a lot of that's made possible by, by voluntary efforts by individuals with a bit of enterprise and a bit of dedication. But definitely there has been a, a shortage of the, in, the, um, in the housing front. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I certainly uh, support the, the motion here. So I think uh, just to conclude, um, I do think that it's great to see the Minister here today. Um, I do think it's very timely because the OMA from, from an OMA Council are working up their local development plan uh, as we speak. And I think it's important that they work diligently to ensure that there's an effective spatial strategy for Moor and indeed the, all of the, the towns, villages and settlements throughout the district. district. So, grab me to my agriculture. Call the Minister for the Environment, Mr. Mark Dorkin, to respond. Mr. Dorkin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Er dus bewaihion mawiahis a goal lesh and wal as an ayr ayraha sha a horch askor and kohanal for hanya jias parakta in you. First, I'd like to thank his member for his interest in this particular issue, which I consider an important topic for debate. I believe that good quality housing is a fundamental human need that plays a significant role in shaping our lives and our communities. It is an issue of concern for everyone. Carrick Moore and I know Mr McAldoff and Mr Byrne have already given us a virtual tour of the town, but Carrick Moore lies around 10 miles to the east of Oma on a plateau bounded to the north and west by the Sperrins uplands. With Sleeve Galleon to the east, the locality is extremely impressive. The number of cairns, stone circles, standing stones and raths in the vicinity indicate the richness of that area. The town itself is steeped in history. Carrick Moor also has a vibrant rural community, evidenced by the fact that almost 200 planning applications for single dwellings, including outlying full and reserved matters, have been approved within a five-mile radius of the village over the past five years. Access to good quality housing contributes to creating a safe, healthy and prosperous society. I firmly believe that this is fundamental to creating places where communities such as Carrickmore can flourish. Housing is a key driver of physical, economic and social change, and it is crucial that we manage housing growth in a sustainable way. This means placing particular emphasis on the importance of the interrelationship between the location of local housing, jobs, facilities and services, and infrastructure. I recognise that housing functions cut across the responsibilities of a number of government departments. And as such, I work closely with my executive colleagues on housing matters, particularly the DRD, DSD, and the Northern Ireland Housing Executive. My department also engages with a range of non-governmental bodies involved in the delivery of housing, such as industry groups, developers, and housing associations. As members, you will be aware that I have fundamentally overhauled the planning system and redefined the landscape of local government in the north. On the 1st of April this year, 
The majority of planning powers transferred from my department to the 11 new councils, giving them a much broader range of powers and flexibilities to implement change on the ground where it matters most. The new Strategic Planning Policy Statement, or SPPS, which I published last month, sets out my expectations for the delivery of planning functions across the region. This includes how the planning system can play a positive and supporting role in the delivery of homes to meet the full range of housing needs within the wider framework of sustainable development. Within this wider framework of furthering sustainable development, councils now have the important responsibility of setting a vision for the long-term future development of their areas through the preparation of local development plans. Uh, Mr. Michael Dolph and other members referred to the OMA area plan and its age. I think it's fair to say that's one OAP that certainly passed its best before date. But councils now have the positive task of facilitating housing growth in response to changing housing need, which is central to meeting the needs and aspirations of society. This includes delivery of social and affordable homes and supporting urban and rural regeneration, particularly in deprived areas. My approach to housing is to ensure an adequate and available supply of quality housing to meet the range of housing needs, promote more sustainable housing development within ex existing urban areas, provide mixed housing development with homes in a range of sizes and tenures, and integrate housing within mixed use developments. In preparing their LDPs, I expect councils to bring forward a strategy for housing together with appropriate policies and proposals tailored to the specific circumstances of the plan area which must also reflect the strategic policy approach of the SPPS. Fermanagh and Oma District Council, using its newly devolved planning powers, is preparing a new local development plan for its area. This new plan will build on preparatory work carried out previously for the West Tyrone Area Plan 2019. The LDP process is the main vehicle for assessing future housing land requirements and managing housing growth to achieve sustainable patterns of residential development. The SPPS provides strategic guidance for plan preparation to assist councils with this process. The DRD's Regional Development Strategy 2035 provides long-term policy direction to guide the public, private and community sectors and gives regional guidance on managing housing growth to achieve sustainable patterns of residential development. It provides a broad housing evaluation framework to assist councils in making decisions on the allocation of housing growth in their areas through the LDP process. This strategy also sets out housing growth indicators as a guide to councils in preparing LDPs these figures are an estimate of the housing needed in each council area. They provide a guide to councils for allocating housing distribution across their area and cover both urban and, importantly, rural housing growth. I believe an important step in the housing allocation process is that councils make the correct judgments to achieve a complementary urban and rural balance, which meets the need for housing in their towns and in the smaller settlements and rural parts of their areas. This is something that I am sure members from areas with larger rural populations, particularly in the west of the region, will appreciate. The Northern Ireland Housing Executive has an important role to play in identifying housing need and the potential for housing growth by carrying out housing needs assessment and housing market analysis. These identify the range of housing needs, including that for social and affordable housing, as well as providing a solid evidence base which councils can use in making decisions to zone land to meet need. Councils should also use the RDS figures as baselines or starting points when developing housing strategies and policies in their LPDs. If necessary, 
These can then be adjusted in light of the housing executive's housing needs assessment or housing market analysis. A further positive outcome of the local government reforms that I have introduced is community planning powers for councils. This has integrated existing council responsibilities such as land use planning with local economic development, off-street parking and local tourism. I believe that community planning enables councils to work in partnership with central government, statutory bodies and others, including businesses, voluntary organisations and communities, to develop and implement a shared vision for their area. It involves integrating service and function delivery and producing a community plan that will set out the future direction of a council area and help tackle cross-cutting issues that require a collaborative approach such as housing provision. Furthermore, and subject to the successful passage of the Regeneration Bill through the Assembly, urban regeneration and community development powers and budgets are due to transfer from DSD to councils next year. This will enhance and further integrate the levers councils have to meet housing requirements in their areas. The wide-ranging reforms to the planning system and local government provide a real opportunity to redefine the role of local government in delivering housing for local people. New development plan responsibilities coupled with community planning powers have enhanced the ability of councils to implement spatial planning frameworks to shape local places and meet local needs and priorities such as housing provision in communities such as Carrickmoor. Finally, I recognise that much of today's debate has focused on the provision of housing in the rural parts of Carrickmore, and I also acknowledge that during the formulation of the SPPS, significant issues were raised in relation to rural planning issues. So, members, I will remind today that I have already instructed my officials on a priority basis to carry out a full review of strategic policy on development in the countryside, and that has already commenced. The question is that the Assembly do now adjourn. The Assembly is adjourned. <laughs>